Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 30 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brisket Sharp. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the bit 3 old today. That means the show getting old, and I love it. I mean, we aging like wine. But appreciate everybody uh, subscribing to the channel. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate it. We still on the road to 500. Hopefully, we can get there before the end of the month. So, all new people, subscribe, comment, share, share with your grandma, all that good stuff. But you know, got the guys in here. Got the guys in here. Look at them, ladies and gentlemen. They all look spiffy, except one guy. But I'll get to him in just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, you'll know who I'm talking about, just how I just move them around, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> First off, the lawyer, ladies and gentlemen. The lawyer with his polo on. We the back. best public defender in there the world, go. ladies and gentlemen. The sharpest. My boy Arlon, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it, brother. Glad to be back. My main man. He got him some headphones, ladies and gentlemen. He said he was too loud on the last pod. We don't think he was, but now he can he sound clear. If he was too loud, let us let him know in the comment section. My dog Tez, ladies and gentlemen. What's happening? What's happening? Microphone, check, check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are definitely good, sir. All right, good, good. And, ladies and gentlemen, the superstar, <laughs> the one that's going to talk bad about everybody on Club Shay Shay one day. You see him with the shades on. Ladies and gentlemen, David Ruffin, and we are the Temptations. My boy, the Haven Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Man, you're on mute, sir. <laughs> your boy is here. Your boy is here, man. What's going on? We yeah, back. Man. It's another show, man. We doing this every week, man. Every week. Every week, ladies and gentlemen. I want y'all to uh, pay attention to this, uh, how nice he's talking right now. Because when he goes on Club Shay Shay and shit on all of us, just know I told you first. Don't this believe man. <laughs> but... We're going to start off tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the NCAA tournament. Something special, something beautiful happened last week. I told a certain group of people. Arlon wasn't here, ladies and gentlemen. He wasn't here for this. But we had the special guests on. We had the Water Cooler Talk Podcast. We had Nick and Marcus on the show. Shout out to them. Make sure y'all go subscribe to their channel. And they're both big time Auburn fans, ladies and gentlemen. Big time Auburn fans. I'm talking about they bleed their orange and blue. But it's somebody else on this pod, too, that bleed that orange and blue. My main man, Tess. And we were just talking last week about just talking about who our sleepers, who's going to win it all. All three of them said Auburn. And ladies and gentlemen, that good old bulldog. And I ain't talking about them Georgia bulldogs. Them good old yeah bulldogs came out there. <laughs> Ooh, and laid they asses out. Paul. <laughs> Not y'all lost. Oh me. man, I couldn't stop laughing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't stop laughing. You know what? I didn't say nothing to Ted. I didn't text him. I didn't say nothing to Marcus. I ain't text him. I ain't say nothing to Nick. I ain't text him. I left him alone. I appreciate it. They should have known when Tuesday came. Oh boy, y'all, y'all the stars, boy. The stars no. were shining, boy. I just want to hear from Ted first, sir. How did it feel to watch that upset? It's Mark Madness. We could have took an L2. But we didn't win the Sweet 16 for road tie, you know what I'm talking about. But tell me how you feel, sir. You said they were going to make it all the way and win it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, man, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. 
Uh, I, I had them win in my bracket. Uh, not because I'm a fan, but like I, just looking at the team, I thought that this team was deep. That they could make a make a nice run. Uh, that didn't happen. I mean, it's unfortunate. I'm watching the game two minutes in. CBM get kicked out for a bogus elbow. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that's why we lost. Uh, mm-hmm. But the guy he's guarding had a season high that day. Uh, I can't think of his name. Started with a P. But uh, shout out to Yale, man. Black coach, long tenure coach. Uh, they did what they had to do. This is one of the reasons that uh, I think that the NCAA tournament in terms of playoffs is probably one of the I'm not, I'm I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's probably the best product, the best playoff product. It's interactive, and man, anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. It's, and so I can't be mad about that. I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, the way we played, uh, particularly the foul shooting down the stretch, missing layups down the stretch, and with Bruce Pearl, man, this is starting to become you know do we start putting this on his resume as a coach that hey he can't get it done in the tournament because you know this is starting to happen frequently now with with decent teams so uh, hopefully we can get it fixed you know make a tournament run here in the next couple years i guess but man it's up it's up it's up to watch uh yeah, that's about it, man. I mean, I can talk about the rest of the tournament, but as far yeah, as that, yeah, man, we 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 just talking about the tournament, man. It, it, it ain't say Auburn Tiger, but you know what? It makes me feel so good inside to see how sad you are about the Auburn Tiger. You know what I mean, bro? I love to see y'all sad, bro. I do not feel sorry for y'all. Even folks were just like, "Well, well Alabama gonna lose soon." I like, bro. I don't care. We know when mm. if we win it all. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen. If somehow anything can happen in this tournament, but somehow by the grace of God, Alabama win the national championship, you do not want to miss that show. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm just leave it out there like that. You thought I was happy about football? I'm gonna act a god darn fool. My fault for cutting you off, sir. Oh no, it's all good, man. Uh as far as just the tournament, man, uh it's it's been a few upsets. Uh the Alabama game was actually interesting because I had I actually had Grand Canyon in my Elite Eight. So not only did I think they were gonna beat Alabama, but I had them upset in North Carolina too. They just played some dumb basketball in that game. I don't know what that was about. It was too hot. I Go ahead. That, uh, buddy name that play for. I ain't gonna lie, boy. That, oh yeah, that play for Grand Canyon. Uh, that Foster. Was a pro- His last yeah, name is Foster. Yeah. yeah, he he's gonna be a problem, and he I think he just got drafted just by just like yeah, just like little stuff like that, bro. Can boost like oh, okay for sure. We need for to go sure. back and look at his tape. But buddy was hooping, boy. Yeah, he was hooping. Uh, the point guard for y'all, what's his name? Uh, uh, Spear. Spear, yeah. He was he was hooping. Well, Sears. Sears. They were they were they were battling, man. That was it was an entertaining game. Uh to see Alabama, who is the highest scoring team in the country, uh get held to, you know, a 40, 50 point game. And then uh Grand Canyon, who's also a very high scoring team, to see them have that ugly game like that. It was entertaining to watch, but I don't know if you watch that game immediately afterwards. Uh, Charles Barkley was like, that was the dumbest display of basketball I ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, and it was, man. It was just like hero ball, one on one. It's not good basketball at all. Uh, but other than that, man, this tournament has been, I mean, I mean, they don't miss every year. Every yeah. year they don't miss. And and that's why when I see like when like Caitlin Clark. And like other analysts and stuff say, oh, they uh the women's tournament, like folks are looking out for that. I'm like, listen here, I would give y'all one thing. Yes, y'all have the names out there for people to just like go out there and watch, but the product, 
is definitely not better than the men's basketball. <laughs> not even, not even close. And then the crazy thing is. Folks say they watch women basketball and then ask them, like, they'll watch the South Carolina LSU. Yeah. But ask me would they go watch the uh, Purdue and Maryland basketball <laughs> game. I, I'm not I don't I, I'm not saying that they play. Really, I just made that up in my head. But there ain't nobody just going, you know what? Let me go check out this Purdue and Maryland women's basketball. They're not doing that. <laughs> Nah. So let's just stop this nonsense. Like the uh, women's game is better than the men's. It's not. They yeah. have bigger names. I would give you that. You, you know what I thought about too when I was watching that Alabama game and uh, watching that kid foster the ball out. I was I was thinking in my head like, what if he had a famous daddy that played in the NBA? That's a different topic though. Because <laughs> because man like. We we know a player that's got a famous daddy that oh. plays in the NBA that's been slated to get drafted early. I've never seen him do anything like that. I'm thinking if I'm a team, I'm I mean, do you this is a better prospect? There's tons of better prospects uh than that yeah. kid. I don't want to change the subject to that, but I'm just saying yeah, yeah. Like, I immediately thought like Man, these mid-major schools got kids that are actually hooping, and they don't get the credit they deserve because they just don't have a platform like that. Yeah, um, I and mean, that's why they uh leaving out and going. They nil got them transferring to like different schools right now. That's why the kids taking full advantage because like a judge stopped like the NCAA penalizing them transfer because you know if you transfer. And then you transfer again. Now you got to sit out a year. It's yeah. like, no, you can transfer as much as you want. So that's why it's like the wild, wild west until they get it uh, structured. So, but all on and uh, the hey, y'all want to talk a little bit about this? <laughs> yeah. It ain't got to be much. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I can't believe y'all lost. Yeah, that's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, only, not only did they beat y'all in basketball, they also have higher test scores. That is crazy. So yeah, bro. Um, I'm not. I'm not really too interested in too many teams uh, this year, for real, for real. But one team that I'm really looking at is uh, NC State. I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for the coach. Um, I like the coach's story. I don't know too much about him, but he was with uh, Rick Pitino's staff back in the day. And, you know, that whole situation got a little messy. But I'm rooting for him, man. Black guy. He has these guys playing really good basketball. Um, and I think they can make a run. I think they can make a run. I think they can beat this uh, Marquette team. I think they can beat this team. I think they can beat this team. Um Especially if they get off the ground running early, they uh play hard, <clears throat> they play together. I think they can they can win this game. Um, I w I did have high hopes for Kentucky. I I knew their defense was gonna be a problem. It's always a problem when you got freshmen playing. It's always a problem when you have freshmen playing. Um, but offensively, I still think pound for pound they're the most talented roster in uh, college basketball offensively. Defensively, yeah. like I said, uh, Kentucky, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah you had a lot. Uh, talent. But What'd you say? Yeah, because of the talent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. For you're sure. not going to find a better uh, group of talent in them, mm -hmm. but I, my fault. Go ahead and figure no, it No, 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 you, because no, cause you're about to hit on the same point. Like, talent just don't produce wins all the time. Like, they had to play defense, and that was a big thing in their games. You could see it all throughout the season, the inconsistency with the with their play. They they just couldn't stop nobody. They'll score, the other team score. They'll score three, other team score three. Like like it they just couldn't stop. They'll score with the best of them. So yeah. So NC State's really the only team I'm really looking at. We have some good games coming up. Uh Alabama UNC, that's gonna be big. That's gonna be big. Um they don't upset alert. Oh for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure, yeah. Alabama's playing good, but UNC has a culture of winning basketball. Yep. And sometimes, you know, sometimes the culture of winning will overtake the hot team. 
you know, so, you know, i.e. Golden State Warriors, Sacramento Kings last year. Cultural winning, well, overtake a hot team. Well, so. that, that, that's NBA. You got seven games here. This, all it takes is one it's bad one. game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't that, have to be the best team. You just got to be that, the best team that day. Just that day, can you <laughs> hit these shots and all that? And uh, talk about what you just said real quick. Like uh, Villanova legendary head coach Jay Wright said this on Saturday. He said, "Like how Cal used to uh, get these freshmen, like Demarcus Cousins." the uh, John Walls, the Anthony Davises, and then they go straight to the lead the next year. Yes, that still works for them to, like, get their money and all that, but it's not working in college basketball today. Reason why, because of those same guys, like, college basketball and the NBA is two different games. Because you can get a guy that's like a junior or a senior, and they all played together for a long time. They're smarter. Like Kentucky gonna always had a, a most talented team, but this team is like the smartest team. They know how to do everything. They're stronger. They're more mature and all that. And I thought about that. I was like, bro. He said, just think about, it. just look at every team out there right now. Yeah. It has an older group and yeah. guys that been in there. And I was like, damn. But he ain't lying. Like everybody. That's what makes the upsets with especially with some of these smaller market schools right. where the guys can't be one and done. Right. That's what keeps them in. They they get to develop and play together. I remember um in 2013, I was in Macon. Mercer upset Duke round one of the NCAA tournament. And that was like a big thing down here in the city. Um, but that Mercer team, all seniors. All seniors. Yeah. All seniors. Yeah. Now next next right. round, I think they played Tennessee, and Mercer's tallest guy was six ten. Tennessee had two seven footers. Nothing you nothing you could do, nothing you could do. So yeah, it, that and that's what made the tournament so lovely, bro. I I don't know nobody that say nothing's above the NCAA tournament. Like yeah. everybody watches it, dog. You, of course, we watching them for the upsets. And trust me, when I see like. A 15 seed got a two seed against the ropes. I'm just hoping that it ain't my team, but woo, how they about to play now. Cause it's like, bro, you got the advantage. Like you got, and this is what I love about those type games. Like when it's zero zero, like everybody like, oh, they about to blow them out, yada, yada, yada. But then it get to that second half, then it get tighter and tighter. Like, oh, they only up by two. Oh, then you start getting tighter and tighter. Oh, it's like two minutes to go, and the game is tied. You can't make no mistakes. Then everybody want to play hero ball. It's like, bro, that's when the game gets crazy. Dog. That's when some of the best yeah. basketball. So, so they, they've been talking about uh, changing it to uh, the four-quarter system. Do you think that that'll hurt that, like those intense games, just moving it from two halves? Because NBA – because that's the only sport that plays – to have yeah because they they chased it for the women and then yeah and i think that was like a couple of years that i uh stopped watching it like heavily like i used to right. and then i was like damn bro they changed the women to, to like quarters but it doesn't matter it ain't gonna change because it's, it's still basketball at the end of the day true let me ask you something all right i don't know if y'all know this but they are looking to implement a new money tournament right the money tournament is gonna be around was gonna be around the same time the NCAA tournament is. So if you get in the money tournament, you're not gonna be able to play the NCAA tournament. You get, from what I hear, you get a million dollars to enter. Your team gets a million dollars to enter. So the boys get a meal to enter, and I think you get like a meal to win. Do you think teams will enter this tournament and skip the NCAA? The NCAA is how coaches make their name, but the money tournament is how the players will get paid. I, I believe they they gonna probably make it a mid season tournament. Ain't nothing gonna trump that uh, NCAA tournament because they they you can't just say that you you can play in this tournament and you can't play in the NCAA tournament. I think that's stupid. I would love no, to see that as an in season tournament or something like that because that'd be dope. Yeah, 
Well, yeah. they they had they've had that, stuff like. Well, you got Ma you got the uh, Maui Invitation. They have stuff like those type of tournaments during mid CC. That type of stuff works in college because I don't know. You just see different teams and whatnot. That type of stuff. I just don't like it in the NBA because it doesn't matter. Like those tournaments oh, sure. really don't matter, but it helps. I mean, I don't mind it in the NBA. I just don't think you got to get a banner for it. Yeah, that 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 was over the top. Now yeah. I put it. It would mean more in college because, like, bro, just think about it. We can just have a regular tournament. It would just do that don't who and just be like, it's a million dollars up. Get your best team and play for this million dollars. Right. That's more exciting than watching some NBA guys get more money. I would love to see somebody who don't have no money like that get some money. <laughs> you you thought you seen some good basketball. Them boys about to be – them cuts going to be hard as <laughs> hell. Like, man, don't mess up this money, dog. I forgot that uh, basketball thing before we uh, move on. It's like a little tournament. Yeah, uh, I – it's on ESPN. I, I can't think of that. And they all play for like a million dollars every year. I just can't yeah, think of that. It's like like that. I think it's like the NIL tournament or something like that. No, I, no, no. I, no, no, I know it's like about, I know yeah, it's like these like former hoopers and like they got a team or oh, something. Shoot. I didn't know that. Like do, a money tournament or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And they do this like every year. Mm. Mm. And I yep. cannot think of like they play to a certain they play to a certain score. Yeah, see, you know what I'm talking about. And they play it on ESPN every year. Like when they get closer to the end, they start showing like the main game because you know you're getting close to that million dollars. Damn, I can't think of that. I'm gonna uh, remember for the end of this part. TBT, the basketball tournament. That that's what it is. Yeah, TBT. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's that's exactly what it is. That's on fire too, though. I ain't gonna lie to you, cause it's just like, bro, these are not like they professionals and they former college basketball players and stuff. They probably play overseas or whatever. Yeah, it's but, like thirty-four college alumni teams and international professionals playing in top mm -hmm. leagues across the world. Um, that's what it's basically saying. So, and I like they rules in there too, cause they play to like just say the first one to eighty-five mm. or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool thing. So y'all go check that out. But roll tide, by the way. But uh, uh, these new NFL rules, well, the NFL new rules. So I don't know what's wrong with these leads. This the one thing that like really bothers me and grinds my gears. It's like the NFL, NBA, all the major sports. Like when you have something so good and you just choose to mess it up. So the league has a new kickoff rule, which I think is so weird to me. It's just stupid. I don't even understand why we're even doing this. The kickoffs during the Super Bowl when everybody used to flash. They camera's going to look a whole lot different. How? I don't know, man. And then the uh, hip drop on tackling. Why the owners approve that? Like, that's like a big outrage right now. More than the kickoff. The kickoff, they just like, eh, it is what it is. The kickoffs ain't been kickoffs for years now. So they pretty much don't care. But the tackling. And I remember, excuse me, you guys, especially like, uh, Arlon and Ted, like how the scoring ain't been so high in the NFL. Oh, you about to see. <laughs> you about to see it now. If you thought you didn't see it now, oh, you definitely about to see it now. So if you think like a good defense now is probably like maybe they'll score 14 points a game or maybe seven. Well, a good defense may be a good 24. I got I just gotta see it because I feel like. This rule is going to mess up so many games, so many games when it's just tight. And then the way a guy tackles, I don't know, man. I, I, I just have to see it. What's y'all thoughts on the uh, rule? 
It's going to be a lot of flags thrown. It's not going to be an easy adjustment. I don't think it's going to last. Uh, they're trying to patty cake football, bro. And it's like, it's, it's sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm out to watch the U, the, X, the UFL to get some real football, you know, around here, man. I, I ain't liking that, man. NFL is, before we know it, man, them boys are going to be out of pass and in flags all over the they waistbands and stuff, man. It's gonna be crazy, bro. And uh, throw out what you were just saying. Uh, what they call it now? The UFL. Oh yeah, the yeah, yeah, they now. they combine now. But they, yeah. I mean, yeah, they call it U UFL. Yeah, their kickoff system came from that. Right. So that's that's where they uh, that's where that uh, kickoff system came from. I just never watched it. Yeah. But I'm gonna watch him more because uh destroying on that and I want to see how he uh play. Hopefully he does great. And I believe he's gonna do great, but y'all go ahead. Uh, so bro, when they created football, they didn't they didn't anticipate Donald, they didn't <clears throat> anticipate Aaron Donald, they didn't anticipate Aaron Donald's JJ Watt, they didn't anticipate this, you know what I mean. The glory of football is, in fact, it's a gladiator sport. But, bro, these guys are getting too big, running too fast, pause, running too fast uh, for the rules to stay the exact same. Um, it's definitely losing its, its luster for sure. But, bro, the hip drop tackle, um, I think they said, leads to about 25% more, leads to about 25% more injuries than almost all of the tackles. Now, granted, running back about to have a frenzy, especially the smaller ones. But, you know, I'm all for them trying to protect individuals who are trying to make their money. So if they trying to protect individuals, some people hate it. Some people like it. I saw um, one uh, retired Pro Bowl tackle, um, Kyle Long. He loved it. He loved it. Um, he was talking about how a lot of his uh, former teammates and friends had injuries that were too hard to come back from due to a hip drop tackle. So, you know, but then I know other players like uh, defensive players, like uh, I think it was uh, TJ Watt or no, it was JJ Watt who said something along the lines of, yo, just add uh, belts with flags on it. Just fast forward is there. <laughs> Cause that, that's where we are. You know what I mean? But the guys are too athletic to be playing this like free tackle uh, football. I say you increase the uh, protective gear to kind of, you know, guard against the impact. But, you know, I don't play in the NFL, so. Yeah, the, uh, the hip drop tackle thing is is a little weird, man. Um, like, when you, when you change the rules of how players tackle, I think that – so, like, the you know how, like, the kickoff rule came from the XFL? I think, like, mm -hmm. when you change rules about, like, how – people tackle it should start like in high school and college and then work his way up to the nfl because they, these players are not going to be able to adjust in one year we saw that when they put in the uh, rules about attacking a player's head it's like it took the defensive players a long time to to adjust and um uh, so like this rule i know like i think mark andrews he got hurt on the hip drop tackle. To my understanding, it's just to prevent people from pinning their legs up under them uh, when they fall. So they get like ankle injuries, knee injuries like that. And I've seen a couple injuries like that. Uh, but like you said, at some point, what do you do? You know, it other than put a flag on them. I don't I don't know what else, uh, what else you could do. Uh, what else can you ban from a tackle at this point? You know, you can't hit him in the head. You can't. You, how do you tackle Derrick Henry now? Is my question. It's like, what, what's you your answer for that? You don't you know? let him score. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy. Get out um, the way. And then, that, and then go, ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was about to talk about the kickoff rule. I love it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I love it, man. I love the kickoff rule. Because one, 
like Brinsky said, kickoffs has been pretty non-existent for the last couple of years. We don't get a lot of returns. Um, I watched some of the XFL last year. I didn't watch, and you know, I'm not gonna see him pretend like I was just watching XFL all year last year. But the, some of the kickoff returns I saw, man, they were really creative because you get all the men on the line, and then you get like reverses and all kind of stuff like. The, the special team coordinators are going to have to um, like, this is going to be like a new kind of like play um, and the creativity that you can do with it. I just think about like, if you had a Devin Hester back there in this system, um, man, you could do some really creative things. Um, I, I urge anybody, if you, if you, if you, you know, just, go on YouTube and look up XFL kickoff returns and, and just look at some of the stuff that they were able to do and draw up. Um, and I think, man, that'd be good for the NFL because kickoffs were on the way out. Like, I, I, I think that's important to note. Like the alternative was almost let's just get rid of kickoffs altogether. Um, and some of my favorite players are, you know, returners you know we all got favorite returners out there uh that's how Dion. you know we love we love coach prime uh he's an excellent returner um but i'm telling you if you look at the xfl if you go on youtube look at a few of those plays and, and think about like now what happens if you put the best athletes in the world back there that's another thing it's safer so now you'll get a tyreek hill back there you'll get you'll get star players back there versus just a returner. Um, so I think it can lead to some excitement and it's only a one year deal. So if, if it doesn't work out, if it's trash, they can scratch it or they can, you know, alter it in some type of way. Uh, but something was bound to happen about kickoffs. Cause I mean, we, we don't even watch kickoffs no more. We just assume it's going to be a touchback. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't do it in preseason first like they do all the time. Um, so that was shocking for them to accept it. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're rolling with this next season. So it's going to be interesting to watch, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's definitely going to be interesting. So I I don't think I'm too upset. Like I said, I don't think I'm uh, really upset by it because it ain't like the old days when kick it off and they've been running, it's literally just a they kicking it out of bounds or it's a kneel down most of the time. So it, it's pretty much obsolete. So it is what it is. And this is how but, they practice kickoffs. Like this yeah. is what kickoff practice looks like. They just and, put it in the game. Yeah. I think the one thing that I uh talk about with uh, our line. And this ain't from my research. This from uh, somebody else uh, on ESPN when they were talking about. You said you had somebody to. Uh, uh, of course, they uh, were never the same after one of them uh, hill drop tackles and all that, or they had an injury from it. I just couldn't remember what you said. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Kyle I'm, Long, Kyle Long he, has said that you know a lot of his former teammates and um, friends around the league sustain like horrible injuries from hip drop tackles. And it was reported that hip drop tackles um, are 25% um, more riskier and lead to injury than other tackles, 25% more. Yeah, and the, and the reason why, thank I'm glad you uh, added that part. But uh, the guy on ESPN said like, Lord, I can never get the word right. Lower uh, extremities? Lower extremities. Yeah, lower extremities, like, it's, injuries was, like, a four-year low this year. So they he don't understand why they even came up with this at all, and that's how I was feeling. I'm just like, bro, a lot of these injuries, like, bro, you, you rarely see that. Like, I know it happened to Mark Andrews this year. He got injured from, like, that. And I remember uh, Kenyon Drake, Roll Tide. Uh, got hurt like that, but he's happy about it. But I know majority of the guys, and I always say, just look at the guys who's playing the game. If they don't like it, no, 
if it doesn't make sense to them, it it doesn't make any sense. I'm I'm taking my cue from them. It's it's mixed though. Like some of the defensive players hate it. Some of the offensive players love it. Some of the people who I can't lost say it's career, mixed. Now that, yeah, no, no. I mean, I've been seeing mixed reviews. Like mm, I haven't I haven't looked up two hundred players, but. No, I've no, seen it. Ain't do that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I mean, like some of the offensive players love it because that's how they make their money. Imagine you yeah. are like a top running back and you destined for this big contract. Boom, hip tackle and bro, that's your hip, your hip socket's out of place. And doctors like, hey, you'll never be able to run like that again. You know what I mean? Like you upset. I mean, granted, that's part of the game, but you you ain't trying to hear that. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's it's fifty fifty. A lot of the defensive players, though, I haven't seen too many defensive players on board with it. Like I said, seeing um seeing some of the retired guys, though, the retired guys being older, they liking it um, meant something to me because you know when you're young, you you feel invincible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do everything but as you get older you get wiser you know you start looking at the totality of all the things you've done in life you say to yourself like man I, maybe we shouldn't be doing this maybe we shouldn't be doing that and that's what some of the vets are, are looking at but again like you changing the you changing the game of football you the thing that made it popular you you taking out the the tenacity the barbaric nature of the sport by making it safe and no one wants to see that. It, it's, it's impossible to make football yeah. safe, bro. It's football. Yeah. And the thing is with that, man, they just need to go ahead and get that up. In, in, 50, but, in 50 years, we may not even have football, bro. I, I believe it. Football is a dying sport. In 50 to 100 years, it may not that. be football. It's going to be too dangerous. Have, have y'all seen that. the uh, the helmetless leagues? I mean, I know rugby. Yo, but yo, I mean, like, I, 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 I my fault. No, I'm saying I, I'm when I say that people think I'm talking about rugby, but I'm, I mean like it's regular football, but they just don't wear helmets. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they have zero head injuries. So like people say, they, they, they need to get to make the equipment better in the NFL, and it's like you, the you, equipment you know, is part of the problem. You, you know why, right? People, people say don't leave. They don't leave with their yeah. head because your head open. Exactly. With your that's, head no more. that's kind of the point. Yeah, yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you may get a fool that just coming in all wild and stuff. Just, oh, there's, no, <laughs> there's always one. <laughs> man, because I can't think, bro. I wish, man, I wish I could have uh, found that clip. I probably can't find it when we move on. But, man, it was some lead, bro. I'm like, bro, these boys hitting, boy. I'm like, y'all must have been paid for this, man. And I'm thinking they playing flag football. Oh boy, them, them some vicious hit boy, with no helmet. And I'm like, bro, y'all are not getting paid for this. This is almost better than uh, what they call it, semi pro football. Mm-hmm. It was definitely way better than that from the highlights that I've seen. But uh, we'll see, man. You just gotta uh, have an open mind to it. So I'm trying to have an open mind to it. So we'll see how it goes. And these are yeah. last thing, bro. These are like, go ahead. Some of the best athletes in the world. That's very true. you know the first year or two is gonna be rough, but but they they'll adjust. Like these are the best athletes in the world. They will I, adjust to the rules. I don't I don't even think it lasts. I don't think it lasts a year. After the year, cause they always vote on it. New year, I've seen uh, rules change very very quickly. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see this one last, but we will see. All it takes is just one season to be like, all right, bro. It costs me this game. Our owner changes mind, like, oh no, we got to get rid of this. But we'll see. NBA award predictions. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the tail end of the NBA season. And it just, just want to. Uh, give out who we think gonna uh win these awards right now. It's just really just some quick that we're gonna do because we got two other musical topics we got to get to. But 
I really just want to ask you, MVP. Yo, uh, I can't really tell you any six men right now. I'm going to uh, wait on that. Just really MVP, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year. Yeah, just those three awards. But I'll start, I'll, I guess I'll start with myself. Now, I ain't want to be too hard into it, Paul. But I said it's either Anthony Edwards and my – because I did like, bro, Anthony Edwards is having a year. Or it could be Jason Tatum, too. He's having a great year, too. Mm. For uh, MVP. Well, who you got for MVP? Well, you, well, I ain't got to well, just reel them off. Yeah. We'll just stay on one thing, then we'll move on to the, the next the, one. Re- the reason it's hard for me to say Jason Tatum is because for at least a month straight, he hasn't been the best player on his team. He has not been the best player of his team. Um, uh, doggy, I'm having a brain. What's the, what's the guy's name? His part, uh, dark skin guy, uh, beard. Brown, Jake, Jalen Brown, Jalen, Jalen Brown. He's been the best player on the team. He he's been he's been the best player on the team. And when it comes to late game situations, I don't like the way. Um, dang, I forgot the other guy's name now. Like Jason Tatum, I don't like the way Jason Tatum's been executing down the stretch. But his team has such a wide such a big record over everybody. I can see why they're trying to give it to him, best player on the best team. Um, I'm MVP. Um, three-way tie between, for me, Giannis, Ant-Man, and Jokic. Uh, Ant, Ant, just because, bro, he got Minnesota with the number one seed. And that's when one of that, the main reason why I got bruh, it out there. Right. When does that happen, like, ever? Um, Minnesota well, was the number one seed. Was that number one seed that year? Yeah, when he won with, MVP. With Latrell, yeah. with Latrell Spirou mm-hmm. and all them? Yeah. Okay. He got that when he got MVP and all that. So, yeah, that was the only time. But, yeah. Bruh, <laughs> bruh other than that, bro, like, nah, they, uh, he got, he has them up. And he's still winning and there's no cat. You know what I mean? Um, Joker. Um, the Nuggets. They they just they look good. They look especially after All Star break. They flip that switch, and um, Giannis Giannis is low key having probably one of the best NBA seasons of all time. Even though his team doesn't have the best record, he's having one of the best NBA seasons of all time. That's my that's my take on the MVP. As far as Rookie of the Year or Defensive player of the year, I think the same person. I'm giving it to Wimby. Uh both ways. Um, leader in blocks. I think he's at about 3.6, 3.4 blocks. That's a whole block, 1.2, 1.3 blocks ahead of second place. And as far as rookie of the year, it's either between him or Chet, home grit. But uh, I'm giving it to Wimby. And Wimby's, they don't even let him play Hold full on. game. Hold on. You moved on to do what? I said my rookie of the year, my defensive player of the year, the same person. Oh man, I was going one by one by oh, one bad. on each category, but my bad. Okay, go ahead. Hey, hey, Club Shay Shay, <laughs> we're gonna be on Club Shay Shay. <laughs> uh, another suspect. <laughs> that nigga only make us talk one topic at a time, bro. <laughs> 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 he put his own name on the front of the podcast. Sharp shooters. <laughs> Why we couldn't be the Williams shooters? <laughs> oh man! So I think uh, is all right. Is my turn? Yeah. All right. So check this out, bro. Feel like for uh, MVP, it should either go to SGA. Or Ant. Mm. Yeah, about mm. Shay. Shay uh, is having a great year too. I really like SGA, man. I like Ant too, man. They both dope. So either one of them guys can get that. As far as rookie of the year, of course, Wimbe um snow, snow comparison. I like Chet too. Wimbe or Chet. Chet's my boy. You see, but, he uh, just do the same thing, Ted. 
He just did the same thing. I right, wait. We supposed to be waiting. See, yeah, it didn't even take the club Shay Shay boy. Go boy, gonna be on club Shay Shay. It didn't even take him long, bro. Not even a minute. Yeah, my bad. All right, yeah. No, you good. Just yeah, yeah go ahead, just go ahead, go ahead, because we about to move on to those anyway. Well, Ted got to get. Well, who your MVP, and then we'll just move on to that. Uh, my MVP, uh, who I wanted to be, uh, I would SGA. Who I think is going to be, uh, Jokic. I think they give it to him again. Uh, it's what we see in the NBA. Uh, they always that award just always goes to whoever they think is the most, whoever the NBA thinks deserves it versus who's actually playing well. That's why that's why MB got snubbed <laughs> that year for Jokic. But I mean, I think I, I'm not saying that he's not a worthy candidate. I just I don't think they're gonna be creative with it at all. They're gonna give it to him again. Yeah, man. I think I mean they uh because I'm kind of changing my pick on uh with Jason because uh SGA is man, that nigga yeah, he's hooping. Bro, he is hooping for real. Giannis, for real. Giannis is averaging 31, yep. 11, and 7. <laughs> I hear you. I'm a 62 percent shooter. <laughs> you said 31 and what? 31, 11, and 7 on 62% shooter. That's crazy. Man, that's almost yeah. like in, that's almost yeah. like every year, man. 31, 11, and 7? Hey, man, I've mm-hmm. seen guys Nigga. do it. But not like him. Nigga, no, you have. There's a very mm-hmm. few. Very few. Who you seen do that? 31, 11? Well, well not, not with the assists. Not with the assists. Uh, thirty-one, bro. Thirty-one. Not off the top of my head. Not that many points, but yeah, he, bro, he balling, bro. I'm telling you, bro. When you have somebody like Dame on your team, that's, that's one you less person. Pressure. That's that's one less person uh, on you. So it just the the floor just opened up wider for him, and it's just sure. like, oh, I I can kick it out. The one thing that I always hated, that's why they won that year uh, when they played against Phoenix, because Chris Middleton was their third. Chris Middleton is is not a good number two. He's like, a, if he's your third best player, oh, that's cool. But now they got Giannis as your best. Then they go to Dane. It's not that much pressure on Chris to uh, perform, but Giannis, it, Giannis been balling too. But it's gonna be an interesting playoffs, though. I ain't gonna lie on that Eastern Conference That's side for sure. Oh, for sure. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really geared up for that. And we pretty much, I think we all pretty much agree. Well, it ain't no pretty much. We do all agree. It, it's basically Wimby Award, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. when you leading the league, I think you leading the league in blocks. Yeah. It's right just now. a matter if they're gonna give them both of them or not. You know, yeah, but it's kind of tough. The only thing is, like, bro, you can be. It's almost like the uh, MVP award, like, bro, you can be bad, like, you can be a good player and like have a good year. You can have thirty. Matter of fact, I think T Mac one year had like thirty five, thirty three, or some odd points, but the magic was like twenty and sixty two, right. That doesn't mean you're the MVP because you got stats. Right. Now, if you putting up those stats and your team is 60 and 60 and 22, oh yeah. Now we can uh talk about this MVP but, conversation. But but see it like this though. If your team 60 and 22, you put up stats, but your team is loaded. Do you deserve to get MVP? Like even us talking about Jason Tatum. Bro. They done it with they done it with LeBron. They had for those Miami team, he won back to back MVPs. I mean, but was his team loaded? There's a lot of teams that had three good guys. There's no, those are hall, nobody good. had three Hall of Fame guys at the time. Not that bro, good. Bro, not, San, not Antonio that good. Still, San Antonio was still running around. OKC was still running around. Bro, these guys were listen there. here. Okay. Listen, okay. Listen, San listen. Antonio had Ginobili, Duncan, Parker, and oh, okay. We're okay. talking about Prime D Wade. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's say all of them in their prime. Now watch how this go. 
Well, how would you order? We all going to say LeBron is top. We'll, we'll do San Antonio first. All in their prime. LeBron okay. is the top one. Mm -hmm. Then Tim Duncan. Now, you going to tell me prime Ginobili is better than I, I'm prime D-Wade? I'll, I'll take D-Wade. Now it gets interesting because then when you go, I'm from, not taking Tony Park over Prime or Chris Bosh, bro. Chris Bosh is dominant. Bro, Chris Bosh didn't bro, make bro, no talking about Chris Bosh with the Heat. Like he wasn't, he wasn't twenty. He wasn't the twenty ten or twenty three and ten guy from Toronto. No, he wasn't no he 20, twenty five and twelve guy. It, it lowered down, but still, bro, that's a good third option. Nobody had those type bro, of third options. Yeah, they Kawhi was that third option. Kawhi was not Kawhi Leonard at that time. Oh, Kawhi he Leonard, what? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard with the Toronto Raptors is not the same Kawhi that won with the uh that won with the uh Spurs that first is, year. That's the, because it's the system. It's the system. He was the same nah, player. He, he, he might have been a better either. player with the Spurs. Oh, for sure. You think that he was a better player with the Spurs than he was with Toronto? With Toronto? Yeah, for sure. You, when you before, he mind, hurt, before he got hurt, before he got hurt. Before no, before he got hurt when they were playing Oak, who was it? Golden State. They were on pace to beat the Warriors, bro. Then he got hurt. That was just uh, game one, bro. Anything can change after game one. They was on pace to beat them that game. I wouldn't say they was on pace to bro. beat them. They were not going to beat them. Want to know why? Because they, bro, they, they yes, they were you got Kawhi and KD year. going at each other, but you don't have nobody going against Steph. You don't have nobody going against Clay, and then Draymond is. Oh, he got to play defense. Systematically, they were they were systematically they had the personnel to give them troubles. They were giving them troubles all year that year. But what I'm but what I'm saying is, when you you take LeBron, D Wade, and I'll even give you Chris Bosh. Okay, you got three you got three players of the top four. But after that, what about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? It spurs the rest of the way down. Those guys weren't no scrubs. You got you got you got Shane Battier. You, <laughs> you still you got, you got still, Shane Battier right there. Still, you got Mike bro, Miller right still, there. Bro, we you got Mario Chalmers. You got bro, Norris still, Cole. You, bro, we you still have, have Ginobili. We still have Kawhi. We still have Tony Parker. Like after you, okay, I, okay. Back. After that, now tell me who they got. Role players. That's all they got bro, is role bro, players. That's what that's what the Heat had. Yeah, role still, right. That's what I'm saying. That's how every team is built, but every team didn't have no, no third guys going to the Hall of Fame. They, every team didn't have no third. Spurs, Spurs had four guys going to the Hall of Fame. Spurs got Bro, four, nobody four. knew Kawhi was going to the Hall of Fame at that time. Nobody. They just said Kawhi is a good player. I, okay, I'll put it like this. Your third guy. Nobody knew James Harden was going to be James Harden how he was in Houston with OKC. Nobody knew he was going to be that. The Lakers' third guy was Lamar Odom. We're going to get Lamar Odom. The Heat had Chris Bosh at three, and Chris Bosh is a top five power forward at that time. Man, they had a, there was a lot of teams that were built really tough. Like Even that Lakers team you talked about. Kobe, yeah. Paul, Lamar, Ron. Like they, there were players. That, there were teams out there, bro. There were teams. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. But they're they're a great team. But hold on, but Indiana, we, hold on, we Indiana team. Lamar, but, but I know we get off topic. Yeah, it is yeah. um, his role in LA. What? Hold on, what Indiana team? That Indiana Pacers team with. Thank uh, you. I, I'm glad you with, went there. No, they had, they had a great they had a great team. Paul George, Paul George, and who else? Hibbert, Lance, uh, bro, Roy Hibbert is the uh, weakest. George Hill. Uh, Come on, bro. You can't make this up. <laughs> bro, bro, no, they, George they, they, Hill. They, he, bro, he was a great player. He wasn't a Hall of Fame player, but bro, you, when you say great player, you gotta understand, bro. That's mean Kobe, LeBron. That's great. No, that's great. That's, that's like all time. He's not an all time player for sure, but bro, you talk nobody about thought of George Hill and so thought what, of great. What about the what team? Do you that consider beat? Roy? What, what do you consider Roy Hibbert? He was a great center at the time. Seven, seven, three, seven, three. Well, you better go look back at that series. That boy played. That boy is soft. There's a reason why he's not in the lead now, because he is soft. I have never seen a guy that's like seven foot three and can't get three rebounds. 
reason I know that because I was like, bro, I hate guys that are just tall and can't get rebounds. You're a waste of height, and you play underneath the rim. But hold on, we 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 went all we went all yeah, about we, we can talk we about that basketball. We what we what about we the team that beat them though? Uh, the that the Dallas team. I, I wouldn't say they had three. They were, I thought they were stacked too. But, but they I wouldn't say they had a better. But, but 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 the thing was with them. See, D Wade yes, is got, the X factor. Yeah, but you got a bunch of guys that can literally just go get it. Right. They can just go go get it. You got a big guy, Tyson Chandler, who they had no matchup for. You got Dirk. Bosch can't handle. Uh, he can do as much as he wants, but he's not a defender like a KG or a Tim Duncan like that. So Dirk can pretty much, I ain't going to say do whatever he wants, but pretty much he can do whatever he wants. Jason Terry is a shooter. By that time, Jason Kidd is a shooter. And he can distribute the ball all over the place. Deshaun Stevenson was playing out of his mind. J.J. Barrett was playing out of his mind. It was, that team was – and then you got Sean Marion. There's plenty of guys that you had going at LeBron. Right. Like, okay, Sean Marion, Tyler, we can throw Deshaun Stevenson on. So that's what I'm he, saying. He had, on, on, on paper, you, you think they're more talented than that big three? I mean, I don't. Oh no 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 and no that's what I'm saying is what that's a team that's when team beats talent right right that that, that that's when it trumps it right there but like nobody even, at- like when you're talking talent you really only talking LeBron D Wade but when you get past that bro Jason Kidd all the fame dirt but you know Jason all Kidd went but but you gotta I, no Jason, Jason Terry ain't going no Hall of Fame but what. Bro, what did Jason Terry do in the lead that made Jason? You, you said Jason Kidd is not going to Hall of Fame. No, you, I thought you said Jason, Jason Terry. No, no, no. I said Jason oh, okay. Kidd. No, no. You Jason Kidd dirt. at that time is not J. Listen, Jason I mean, Kidd. He's not Jason, played, Kidd. He's not Jason, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd wasn't Jason this. Kidd of the Nets. That wasn't Jason no. Kidd of the Nets. No, this is Jason no, Kidd no, no, on no. the Dallas Mavericks. That's just a name. That's it. But 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 but, but no, he no, balled no, out though. Okay. Yeah, he yeah, balled, but he, he no, did. he didn't ball like you think he balled. He distributed. He he don't always have his passes. That's natural right. for him, right. and he became a better shooter. But no, nah, bro, he, J- Jason Kidd was not All Star Jason Kidd anymore. He wasn't making All Star. Oh no, no, bro, I'm saying he, he, he played did. well in that playoff run though. He just had a name. Just because he had a name at that time, just because it's a name that we recognize, don't mean he is Jason Kidd. Anymore. Nah, but that's like Shaquille O'Neal on the Cavs. I, just because I feel like no, nah, he was better than Shaquille O'Neal on the Cavs. Really. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's a name. Like, oh man, LeBron bad Shaq, but Shaq won Shaq of the Lakers. Those are two different Shaqs. That's the point I'm getting to. Those are two different players. I remember when Shaq was on the Celtics. <laughs> oh God, what year was that? Uh. That LeBron and them played so, Dallas. 2011. 2011. Hold on, man. We getting off the subject. No. Oh, because yeah. the whole thing was, we could talk about this next week for real. But we all can agree who uh, Rick Eddie is. And that's Wimby. No. I think Brandon, I Brandon Miller going to get third and Chet going to get second on the award. But for defensive player of the year, that's where we went down the line. I believe you can put up stats, but if your like overall team, like defense is just trash, like you're not going to uh be um uh, what how can I say it? My fault. I did like your team. Just say the, the Spurs have a terrible record. They're like probably like dead last in defense, but you're putting up all these stats. That doesn't mean you're defensive player of the year. And that's why I like, and that's why I use that uh, T-Mac example for uh, like he can score 30 some uh, points, but he on a 22 and 60 team. Don't make you the MVP. So defensive player of the year, it's going to be very, very interesting where they go with that. But trust me, Wimby's gonna win some uh defensive uh player of the year. Cause I'm like, bro, the man is literally an alien. Right. 
And if he stays healthy, he has a good chance of being up there with the all-time great. I'm just not ready to crown him because I know I have watched too much basketball over the years and just seen guys get hurt. Like, oh, bro, you see this dude projecting. Like, if Greg Oden didn't get hurt, Greg Oden would be one of the top uh, centers in the league if he had a foot injury. That's why I don't ever consider him a bust. Because if you – it's one thing to be – a bus and you playing and you just trash like Anthony Bennett. He was just garbage. I don't know who, where that guy came from and why the Cavs took him. <laughs> like that guy was just garbage, bro. And dude just cannot convince me. Now, if you just getting hurt, you can't help that. I never considered guys getting hurt uh, because when Greg Oden did play, he was playing good. Right. You remember right. Michael Carter Williams? Michael Carter Williams probably had one. I don't know what's up with his career. That was like one of the best debut ever. <laughs> but <laughs> now I'm just like, bro, this man is about to have a career, but it can go away like that, bro. It's just like Brandon Lynn Sanity. <laughs> Lynn Sanity had like the world on lock for like three weeks, boy. <laughs> the world was on lock. Like, bro, this boy. This little Asian boy, is he Asian? Yeah, he was Asian. Yeah, yeah he's Asian. Like, this Asian guy is just shaking up everybody. Like, it's unnatural. That's almost like a white corner in the NFL. Like, oh, boy, this white corner is locking up all these black receivers. And then when they figure out he can only he can only drive, he can't shoot, it's over with. Yeah. And the crazy thing is he was making a few shots. So, like I said, man, the – we all agree on the rookie of the year easily, but defensive player of the year is something that's really up in the air. They could give it to Wimby, but I just don't see them giving it to Wimby because your team cannot be, in my eyes, you can't be trash on, like, your team defense cannot be, like, at the bottom and you win defensive player of the year. Hmm. I, I have never seen that happen. Okay, like, you think, think about The only thing like, about it, him is go he, ahead. he and then probably we'll – you know, he, he probably – the way that they give it to him, if they do give it to him, is going to be because it's going to be historic. It, like, at the end of the season, it's going to be historic. Um, and and they may they may give it to him just based off that. Like, it's going to be – yeah. at the yeah. rate – if he keeps it up at the rate he's going and he plays uh, consistently – like throughout the season and not take any games off and stuff like that. Like I don't I don't know. I, I had to look up what's the blocks per game all time. He's close to four. The, 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 he's, he's about at four, yeah. So that's a lot. Like uh, but yeah, but yeah. The thing is, like, yeah, guys used to average that at a certain point. Like uh like the Dikembe's and all yeah. those type guys at once upon a time. But defense ain't been in the league at that position like that in a long time. So it's bro, just no one's, refreshing to no see. No one's ever averaged four, point, four blocks a game, bro. In a season? That has definitely happened. For real? That has definitely happened multiple times. Hmm. I think Mark Eaton definitely averaged probably like five. Hmm. Let me look that up. Keep going, bro. I yeah, have about the end of your segment. Yeah, but um, uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy, bro. I, I just don't see them doing it, but it's going to be very, very interesting what they're going to do. I just have to see it with my own eyes. I yeah. just – Yeah, I nobody's just, nobody's average for The all-time – All time is Mark. did it in the 80s. Oh, yeah, that one season, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about, like, you average that – Oh, oh, you mean like a season? I'm yeah, talking about right, like right. a season. Like guys done it now. I can't speak on what guys average yeah. in their career, but I'm talking about in season. That definitely happened multiple times. Eaton didn't. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he had 5.5 5 in the That's what I'm saying. It was like five blocks. Yeah. I do that one off. It's the 80s, though. No, nah, yeah. boy, that's, yeah, that's the big, that's the real era of centers. Of centers. We talking about all-time great centers. Them wasn't no screws. You so like if he if he gets to four, if he gets to four, I think they probably give it to him. 
The only I thing mean, that- I, I just don't trust the NBA when it comes to awards like this, bro, because they always screw something up. <laughs> only one I'm really mad at that they that, that it was that that was just clearly a popularity contest. They should have gave Carmelo rookie of the year for him making. He had a better year playoff. than LeBron, and he made the playoff in the West. But he had, a, he, had a better, he had a better team, though, know, in the, at the time, too. They didn't have the coach, the, but he had the a better team. team. Was, the team was trash boy, until Melo got there. You talking about the, the Kenya Martin, J.R. Smith team? That, that was before they got there. I'm talking about rookie Carmelo Anthony. That, that, I, mm, I, thought, they, tell, I bro, thought they were on the team during his rookie year. Bro, Kenya Martin was playing with the New Jersey net traffic. Bro, basketball is my thing. I love this game. That man had Chris Anderson on his team. Chris Anderson, John Barry, Ryan Bowen, Earl Boykin, Marcus Camby, Nene, and he was a rookie that year. Andre Miller. I forgot. I forgot. That team don't sound that bad, bro, compared to that Cavs team. But he did make the playoffs. So that's something. What you mean said. that team don't sound bad? What are you talking about? Like as bad as the Cavs team compared to the Cavs team? We're talking about the Denver Nuggets in the West, where you got to play more West teams than the right. East team. But still, he had a better team. I, I think that's something to be said. Mm-mm. You don't think he had a better team? Who who on here that I named that you can say he had Marcus Camby? He had Marcus Camby. LeBron had Big Z. Big Z is a better basketball player than but, Marcus Camby. But, but how old was Big Z back then, bro? Come on. Mark, Big Z at that time is in his prime. He's, yeah, he's a mega all-star game. That's what I'm saying. He's in his prime. Marcus Camby yeah. was just a regular role player. I don't know, dog. I don't know. You can look it up. I'm telling you, bro. I, I love I this game. I don't, think, I don't think I can give you that. That. That Cavs roster was better than uh, Melo's even, roster. Even if, even if it was slightly better, dog, he made the playoff in the West at that time. Think about the West in that yeah, time. Yeah, that, that, that's, something, that's something to be said. That's something to be said, for that sure. That is highly for sure. For, sure. for sure. That's something to be said. Well, we're going to move on to this one because these are the topics. Hot off the press. <laughs> Spoiler alert, this is going to be the name of the title for this week. Like that. One of the hottest songs in the street right now. Because Metro and Future, like, I'm so glad. I've been saying it for years, but I'm so glad that other people just like, hey, man, we got to start putting Future and Metro up there as, like, like a Snoop and Dre and, oh. Uh, um, Nas and uh, Hit Boy, uh, just all these like bit time acts and they producers come together. What's my boy Zaytoven and Gucci Man? Like those type oh, of dudes, like every they like they don't miss, dog. Like they don't miss. And I was the new once I heard the title, I was like, I knew Metro was coming with some of the best production, and he's my favorite. Um, uh, producer of like young guys i don't think there's anybody better than him because it only proved it when i listened to the album i like bro the production on this is just like top tier but on the song like that future snapping then we had a surprise guest on there mr kendrick lamar snapping like he normally does and then he said, after a bit three, man, it's just bit me. I like that type of stuff in rap. That's what I like to look at. I like to have that ugly face. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, fight, fight, man. <laughs> I need some of the top dogs going at each other. Like, who is superior in this game? It ain't even got to be no gun stuff. Like, I am bigger than him. I don't think he's the best one. I think, when, like, clearly the best lyricist out of all of them is Cole. I don't know if everybody agree with that, but I think it's Cole. But the better artist is clearly Drake, because Drake can do it all, bro. Drake can literally do it all. If he want to make an R&B album, he can do it. 
if he want to rap, he can rap. It just don't matter where he want to go with it. But, and I don't know. I wouldn't even say Kendrick makes better albums. I'll say I'll get that one slightly to Cole, but uh, Kendrick got some great albums too. But what's y'all thoughts on it? Man, uh, the the Kendrick Drake thing, it it never it doesn't seem friendly at all. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't seem friendly at all. These guys have been going at it for over a decade at this point. Um, they've been going at it for a while too. So I I hate I don't know, man. I don't see Drake. I don't see Drake responding. If he does, it's gonna be subliminal. Um, Cole might. I'm excited to see what Cole does, but you know, Cole may not respond either. It, it's just a weird rap. It's just a weird rap beef between the three. I really, I'm at a loss for words for it because I really don't know how it's gonna go. I think Kendrick's the better rapper, but. Kendrick, his style of rap is so top tier that he's pushing the art so forward, so far in the future that it's hard to digest. Cole is very easy to digest. His rap is very easy to digest. It's not too much on the ears. You know how, you know how hard you have to listen in as a casual rap fan to Kendrick Lamar to catch all the metaphors, to catch all the artistry? Cole, I could pop it in and it just resonates. You know what I mean? So, but I, I do think Kendrick is the better rapper, but Cole, Cole just resonates more. And um, Cole might respond because he, he's been killing everybody on track for the last like year and a half, two years. So he might, but if I was Cole, like, why would I? Why would well, I? You lied. What? You said Cole been killing guys on the track for the last year. Cole years. been killing guys. Oh, two years. Cole yeah. been killing guys on tracks for years. Well, 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 here's the thing. Cole was, for, for, for a while, Cole was just driving up to people doing features. And I think he was doing that because he wanted to see how you rapped and wrote in person. He would pull up to your studio and rap with you. You know what I mean? You can't hide behind your ghost rider, your crew, and all that stuff when he right there in your face and y'all laying bars together. You know what I mean? So for, for years he's been doing that drop jumping on jumping on tracks, killing you on your own song. You know what I mean? He really got on a, a song with Drake and said, We the big three, like we started the league. But boy, I'm Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that track would never came out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it would never came out. He 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 just that guy, man. Right. Imagine like all these that. guys, that, all all these guys, them guys. But you, let uh let D boy go ahead before we get to the last one. Hey, go ahead. could you imagine? Hey, before you start, bro, could my you fault, imagine bringing your homeboy around your girl and your homeboy say out loud like, "I got the biggest dick in the room." Man. That's what J Cole hitting people with, bro. Every Paul. time you get on your track, I'm at, Paul, Paul, but I never heard this. I've never heard him say that. I'm, I'm, I'm not about to. I'm not about to answer that. I never heard him say that. I'm not even about to answer that. I don't even know how to respond. <laughs> no, no, no. Nah, but, but yeah. check this out. I, I, I get, I get what you're saying, Arlon. Like, no, I get what uh, he's saying, but I ain't responding to it. He's turning it into like a, uh, you know. I'm better than you type situation. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, I feel like the most talented artist out of all three of these guys, uh, rap wise, is uh, easily J. Cole. I think um, he's the best rapper. Um, the best artist all around is Drake for sure. And then Kendrick comes in number three. Um, for me, man, Kendrick don't really do it all for me, man. Like some of his music, uh, 
some of Kendrick's music to me, man, it just don't hit the same. It don't hit like a J. Cole or like uh, or some of Drake's music, you know what I'm saying? For me, you know, but I'm not from the West Coast. A lot of that, uh, he be like Nicki Minaj on the track sometimes. You know how when Nicki be saying all the crazy <laughs> stuff, you know what I'm saying? And it's rah, 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 rah and all that. He be doing that, bro. He got like that Nicki Minaj complex, man. I don't really be feeling that sometimes, like, like the King Kenny and all that, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's it's cool, man. Kung Fu Kenny and all that, whatever. You know, but it don't really resonate with me like that. Maybe I need to listen to a little more of his music, a little more than I than I did in the past. But uh, I really do rock with Cole, man. Really rock with Drake. I feel like. Uh, I hate this man, but say I love Future, man. And it's like I, I I don't. Come on, man. Why why it's got to be Future and Kendrick Lamar and and all this against J Cole and Drake, man? It's just weird. But I'm a big Future fan. That ain't gonna stop, man. It's I think just, Future mad. I think Future's low key beefing with Drake too. Yeah, Future is. It, yeah, he is. He is yeah. yeah, that's probably how it all happened. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why all these features is coming out how they're coming out right now. Yeah. And then and, they uh, think well, it, was, it was something between Metro and Drake. And oh, I, they I definitely feel like got, that joint and, open. That joint open. Yeah, and, they, and, and it was something that Metro Metro did throw a slide at Drake. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, as, as, if that's somebody your friend, what he did, that was when Drake was going off on him. I was like, yeah, Drake had a reason to go off on him. Now they saying future and Drake beefing over a girl. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. I Not think, over I think no. I think they might have been beefing yeah, over I, uh that album he made with 21. <laughs> I think I think that was it. Wow. So I, don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, because yeah, Drake's a legendary artist. Drake's a legendary artist. They have a joint album together. You ain't trying to see him have a joint album with 21 the up next upcoming atlanta rapper who in the same lane as future you ain't trying to see that if anything we need to do a part two to our first album why are you gonna go to 21 in the same area mm -hmm. same style of rap mm -hmm. no, and and that no, no, album no. if not better is on par with drake and future's album no, no. Yeah, it it was a great album, but it, that on, um, on on par, you couldn't name five songs from that Drake in a future album that's gonna stand to uh, the five best songs on that uh twenty one and Drake album. Nah, man. But do you not know when a time to be alive came out? <laughs> like how crazy the streets was. It wasn't even. It wasn't even the better. Drake released views not too long after that, and views was better than that. Oh no, man. I don't Drake, know about that the one. Drake though. Future album was no. <laughs> that joint was yeah. legendary. And then nah. we had Future for Homecoming that same year. Yeah. That might have been Future's worst album of the year. Cap. Bruh, bruh, he released Dirty Sprite. Uh Dirty Sprite, was it two? Came out then? 56. And guess when it, hold on, hold on. I hold on, hold on. Just because you said Dirty Sprite 2 first. Just fun fact. It dropped on my birthday. You don't want to get that out of me. I had a great birthday when that <laughs> dropped. But go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, fifty six nights. You may make a good point too. Mm -hmm. And um, that Drake Future album. Come on, bro. Uh, fifty six nights had a uh, March Madness on, didn't it? Fifty six nights. No. Just, yes, it had like the. Oh, you had the biggest <laughs> single, but fifty six nights. It, that Drake and Future album is better than that. And that and that fifty six nice is five two. Now that that, mm. that what a time to be alive was crazy, bro. I'm telling you, brother, like that. Mm. That was like a whole like a whole another give me, world. Uh, bro. Give me, when you get a chance, give me five tracks, bro. You got Jersey, you got Digital Dash, you got Digital scholarships, Dash. you got yeah. Diamonds okay. Dance. I mean, I mean, the album was dope. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you a radio was, guy was, too? You a radio dope, guy too? How many of these was on the radio? Cause that's always your argument, Dave. And like, 
Yo, I didn't hear nothing. Digital Dash was on the radio. Bro, uh, that Dash whole was album was on the, was on the bro. bro. Hey, Jumpman, <laughs> Jumpman, come on, Jumpman, Jumpman was on Jumpman. the radio. Yeah, that ho- everything was on there. Big rings, big rings was on the uh. Like these were celebrating it? championships. When they, I got big a really rings, big huh? team, and they need some really big rings. Like, bro, they they were celebrating uh, championships uh, with that, bro. That I'm like, bro. Oh, that whole album get, went off, bro. Like, come on. Like, bro, I don't know what you were doing. You, you mo, you mo, you mo, you mo was heavy in law school at that time, boy. You mo was heavy in law school that time, boy. Yeah, bro, you, let me yeah, tell you something. The street live from the gutter. That was hard. Like. Like right, bro, they, had some, they had good songs on it, bro. But I don't think, I don't think like it was the biggest. That album got swept on the rug by everything Future and Drake was doing. It was I out know, of all their know. albums that they're on that. Wait a minute, swept. you you saying that that album got swept under the rug by everything else they were doing? The, yeah, because Future had Future dropped Dirty Sprite too that same year, didn't he? Yes. Dick talking all that, bro. That, was, that was swept was... underneath the rug, bro. That was the worst swept underneath the rug album I have ever heard in my life. Like everybody was listening to that, dog. bro. They they just had so much heat coming out that year because Future. I, that was the year Future was it Future who uh his DJ found like all those old beats that he lost or whatever, and they just went stupid. Start dropping song after song, yeah. track album after album. No, nah, I think mean, what happened, Esco, Esco had got arrested or something, and his uh flash drive was confiscated or some shit. Yeah. Ain't that what happened? Yeah, like, something like yeah, that. He got like it that. back. He got it back. Yeah. Like, during this time, because I got uh, pretty much every last album on here, when that nigga dropped Monster in 2014, which a bunch of classes on there, then started the year off with Beast Mode, because I remember when Beast Mode. Beast Mode right. was probably his worst one, but he was still bangers oh, on it. Killer. But killer. that's how great of a year the man had. I'm saying oh, bro, that's that his, I'm saying that's his worst one, but the thing was Paul, but that album was still dope. <laughs> and then no, you drop Fitness sure. Night, and then you drop Dirty Sprite 2. Then you drop uh What a Time to Be Alive. Bruh, few bruh. 2015 was probably future year. Exactly. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. That's what catapulted yeah. him to that upper echelon. Like that was it. If you that gave me the, if you gave me the Mount Rushmore for that whole decade, because it's literally Drake, Future, not Drake, Kendrick, Cole, Future. I'm not in no order. I'm just saying that that's just a Mount Rushmore of that time. Cause I'm like, bro. Folks are always gonna put them bit three in there, and then they always have a hard spot picking the fourth yeah. person. Bro, it's without a doubt it's future. It's without a doubt it's future. Cause I'm like, so, bro. So, so you just named all those albums: Dirty Sprite, Fifty Six Nights, Beast Mode. What a time to be alive! Live, just those three albums. Yeah. Where you stack that three album run amongst all the greats, bro? No, he had a way, way long run. But a lot of those, some of those no, mistapes. Is that is that is that one of the best three album runs that you've ever that's, seen? That's not an album. Mistapes are not albums. Which one was the mixtape? Because all of those were albums. Or oh, they're on no, Apple no, Music, they're no. albums. Of course they're out al- they're albums on there, but they're mixtapes. Nah, bro. If you on Apple Music, you got an album, bro. The album. You know they changed that up. You do know that, right? Yeah, it's a mixtape. <laughs> That is Bruh. definitely a mistake. Some of them was, was EP. You, hold on, let me ask you this. Yeah, you think EP, drought, that's what I was trying you, to say. You, you think drought, hold on, drought three is on uh drought three is on uh Apple Music. You think that's an no, album? No, it's not. No, it's not. No way. When they put that on there yesterday? <laughs> drought three. I think no ceilings is on there, but that's a mix, that was a mixtape for sure. But when, new, you, clear, but when you clear it, it's an album. When you clear it, it's an album. It doesn't make it an album, bro. Just because yes, it is. That's it. what makes it an album. You get it. Cle- you get the. You get everything clear. That makes it an album. The mixtape is for non uh, non financial games. Isn't that right, David? Mixtapes, non financial games, bro. It's free. Uh, I mean, what? I'm gonna put. I'm yeah, like, that's, that's, when I did contracts. That's that's what that's what our definition of an bro, album oh, and the mixtape was. Bro, oh, okay. When okay, I did that's, contracts. That's, that's, okay, that, that's cute and all, but bro, we know what a, what we know what these things. Can, we know what these uh, 
albums and mistakes came out. We know which ones are mistakes. We know which ones are albums. Those were mistakes that Future put out. 56 no. Nights. 56 Nights is definitely a mistake. Yeah, Beast Mode is definitely a mistake. Dirty Originally. Sprite 2. Is but, but this is the difference, though. This is the difference. This, this is the thing, online. The mixtapes that Future was dropping are different from the ones Wayne was dropping. The, the stuff Wayne the stuff. was dropping back in the day was when he was rapping over other people's beats. Now, a lot of rappers used to do that. Future is not one of them rappers. He was dropping mixtapes that he paid for the beats and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Which, yes, when they get uploaded to Apple Music, they're either going to be classified as EPs or LPs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, that's why, Arlon, you're not really wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because they did drop officially. So, yes, since they dropped officially, they are considered albums. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's an EP or an LP. They're not really looking at those as mixtapes because he's not he's rapping over music that he fully owns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's the thing. But when they did drop, they were on all the mixtape platforms as yeah, mixtapes. Yeah. Right, they but I was out for free. Right. They weren't sold in stores. You couldn't go buy mm -hmm. 56 nights physical copy at Best Buy. It wasn't an official album. At the time. That's the only thing I'm saying. Like, just yeah, because it's official, like, yes, we can say it on paper. Like, yes, they they probably like now it's considered an album, bro. Nobody that listened to these things will say that is an album. That's just we, like so far gone, Drake. Right. Drake yeah, dropping, yeah. So far gone as a all the Wayne's dedications, but all but, the but so far gone actually came out as an official Drake album. Yeah. Over mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. it wasn't like that at first, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I feel you, but, but I can't wait. We we about to get some of the best music ever. You think I'm just so? Saying, and, I mean, I'm just like, already had an album I like competition. Out, I just like when order is restored. So, so order is restored it. among the top. That's it, and then we're gonna the thing, move on. The thing about it, man, is. For me, is man, they never. I mean, if you, if we're gonna get some of the best music, it's not gonna be in form of disc records. No, like that's what I'm they, saying. Yeah, they they Kendrick, but you're gonna get a shot or two. Yeah, you get a shot or two, but Kendrick is clearly wanting something from this battle that the other two just don't want to engage in at all because he's been talking about like he. He went on the BET Cypher and did a whole verse about this man with his fact. It, it, like, it, and there's clearly something about that that Drake doesn't want to address directly because we've seen him address other people directly before. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what it is, but there's some people that's just cut out for like battle rap in like this whole going back and forth thing and i think kendrick is one of those people um or just 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 he just has the he has enough to say it you know what i mean like he'll say it um i don't think cole really cares as much bro. like i i, I just don't I, I think he he's secure where he is and what he does i just don't think he cares as much to engage in it for real for real i mean he's popular for his homeless aesthetic so like it's not much that he cares about and i don't think that this is one of them he'll give some shots too but i think the the biggest one that people are looking for is what will what will drake say um uh, because we know cole cole might send some shots too but it's healthy competition the one person that can get sensitive about this and take it to another level is Drake because Drake can make a diss song a number one hit. I don't think either of the other two can actually do that for real, for real. Like not, not for real, for uh, real. Drake can oh, no. make a Billboard number one yeah. diss song. Yeah, they, they know you don't know. You know that that bad yeah. to bat, the bat to bat was just simple, and it went up. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of if he wants to smoke or not, and does he feel like he can 
participate in this battle for real, for real. I mean, I don't know. They, you know, they got the ghost writing allegations and stuff. And I think that's honestly why Kendrick keep poking at him for real, because he he doesn't he doesn't respect his pen. Um, so I don't know. I mean, he, be- even so, he's a better MC than Drake, but with me, Mill is a better MC than Drake. But Drake won that. Yeah. It all it all depends on how you handle stuff. So Pusha just set Drake up, and I was like, man, Pusha oh, don't yeah. stand a chance. And Pusha just came out. See, he was smart. He yeah, wanted strategic. Drake to come at him. Yeah. He wanted Drake to come at him, and then when Drake did it, gotcha. And then it was just like checkmate after that. And then what did you hear after that? Nothing from Drake. But but that I just like held yeah, the competition. That's all it is. I ain't saying you're going to get like the best beef songs ever. No, I'm just saying like that's what I love when you restore order. Let's come hmm. with it. Let's see who's going to do this. But, Let me play devil. Oh, oh my hold on. bad, bro. Yeah, go for it. But no, we were going to go to the uh, three album one now. Mm. You good? I'm asking. Yeah. Now, what I was going to say is go ahead, there's we'll, uh, something we'll, about uh, real quick. J. Cole. There's something about J. Cole Kendrick, too. You remember back in the day we were in college? It was rumored that J. Cole and Kendrick were coming out with a mixtape. Yeah, that never came mm-hmm. out. Yeah, it never that. came out. And I wonder why it never came out. And after that, you never got any more collabs from J. Cole and Kendrick. So that might be something there, too. I think Kendrick can be a little sensitive, but hey, man. Yeah. But if them two really went at each other, I believe Cole would destroy him in my eyes. Now, you may get some Kendrick guys that be like, he, he going to do, but I'm like, bro. But we'll see. But ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the last topic. Now, a certain somebody on this podcast said some outlandish stuff in um, test message. I ain't going to say no names, Arlon. But uh... come on, Nate. <laughs> come on, Nate. <laughs> Hey, change you see how that that changed, quick, Mr. 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 <laughs> Mr. 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 Yeah, glow. You are you a good guy. You a good guy. I just see what you're doing. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, glow. <laughs> but uh, he was saying we were talking about uh, three album, like three album run, and he said some very, very, very disrespectful stuff about an artist. Okay. Let's, that, let's, let's, Tell but I'm going to let him explain it. I don't don't even say the artist who you were talking about. I just go ahead and explain, but just don't say the artist. So okay, so I posed the question to the group. Hey yo, who had the better three album run? Drake with "Take Care," nothing was the same. And if you're reading this, or Wayne with the Carter, Carter two, Carter three. Well, that got Brent getting them to talking about who had the best three album run ever. And I put up that, well, I still put Drake as one of the tops for his three album run with Take Care, Nothing Was The Same, if you're reading this. Them songs were everywhere you, at all You're capping time. right now. Now you're capping. Oh, no. Nah. Bro, I even, put even Drake if you, up. Even if you put Drake, Drake up, up there, that, that ain't that original uh, three that you said. No, those are, those are my three Drake albums. Those are my no, three no, Drake no. albums. That, that wasn't what you originally said for the first three. You was talking about Kendrick. No, I said I I started with Wayne, and then I said, well, who had the best three album run out of the best out of, the, out of Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake? And I said, J. Cole has a good three, but they couldn't mess with Drake. But Britsky ended up saying Kanye. And I said, yeah. you know what? Kanye had a good run. But I think late registration wasn't as fire as the other two albums to put him in like that big three with Drake. That is laughable. That is laughable. It's not. It's not. It's so, not. so Drake debut, Drake debut album. Go, go, go ahead, Ted. I was about to ask about late registration. So, if you put graduation. I, what do you give that scale of one to ten? 
Um, okay, I'm grading it on a all time great scale with like, no, I mean, okay. just, just for this list, like that whatever, is. yeah, you, for this yeah. list, great. I'm giving that, I don't know, seven. I'm giving it seven. What you giving it seven? Graduation, right. yeah, I can't give it a 10 because then nothing beats a 10. Why would I give it the top? Uh, okay, if, so, if so that album means- is five. It's just five. You gave uh, graduation. All the albums are five. That's what we about to talk about. Nothing but no, 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 no. Albums. You gave graduation a seven. Yeah. So that means uh, late late registration falls to what? Like okay. a five. Five. I'm I'm grading it on an all time great scale, not a regular album scale. No. What do you grade them on a regular album scale? I'm not comparing what? this album to Ice Spice. No, I'm like, talking listen, about bro. no. Give me what a would 10. you rate one out of ten? What would you rate his album? Just album period. I'll give graduation a nine, bro. I'm not gonna give it a ten. What's a ten? I'm not gonna Please. give anything a perfect score. You don't have any albums that's a ten to you? No, I'm not giving it a perfect score. This ain't a perfect album. This ain't a ten. I'm not giving this a album perfect right score, here. Bro. I'm not giving nothing a perfect score. You won't give this album that is if probably I, the best sounding album of all time, and it came out. What is twenty? If I give, if I give it, if I give it a ten, I will change the scale to eleven. No, so so I I was just trying to see yeah. how far off you were because you said that late registration doesn't stack up to the other two. So I wanted to see how big that yeah, gap was. Yeah, it's not. It's Why not. It's you not get late far. registration. Yeah. We nitpicking. We nitpicking. We 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 looking at the greatest albums. We talking about some of the greatest albums of all time. So we're nitpicking. That's it's what no I'm bigger run nitpicking. than. It's no bigger run than Kanye run, bro. Nobody in the history of rap. Nobody. How what, can what, you what, say? Why are you saying? What are you talking about? Aesthetically pleasing? Or are you talking about numbers? Which one are you going with? Yeah. Look at the songs on there, bro. <laughs> Okay, what songs do you play all the time on late registration? Without looking it up, what songs Go, do you play? Gold Digger still be played today. Okay, Gold yeah. Digger. Give, give me, give me, just give me three, give me five. Touch the sky. Touch the sky. Okay. Okay, what are you looking say. at? Just, 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 just stay here with me. What do you, okay. Touch the sky. What else did you say? Heard him say. Heard him say. You can listen to that song. You, you, you. Like you be you rap that joint, bro. You be I know the same word for word. I know you, it word for. You and Sarah be bumping. When's the last time you uh bumped her? Sarah doesn't bump. Sarah doesn't bump rap. I bump rap. I'm not even. When's the last time you bumped mm-hmm. her? To say? I can't when say I've been bumping in a minute, but I'm yeah, still like, bro. If it turn yeah. on, I still know the word word for word. All Tell right. me what you. All right, hold on. Answer this. What? Without looking it up, what what album from Take Care? Not even Take Care, from Drake's debut album. What songs you listen to? We're not talking about his debut album. I said no, no, no. What? That's you literally just said that was one of. One no, of I said I, the three albums I gave you was Take Care, his sophomore okay. album. Okay. Uh, nothing was the same. Okay. And then if you're reading this, those three albums. And we're okay, comparing we're, that to Kanye. Dude, late registration was such a classic, though, bro. I'm talking yeah, about. You got drive slow. You got I gone. Think, you got yeah. gone. You got diamonds from Sierra Leone. You got uh late. You got hey mama celebration. We major, bro. Addiction. One of the hardest. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One of the Moses. One of the hardest songs on that is we major with Nas on there. When Nas step on that and bless man, come on, boy. I'm sorry, I'm Bruh. sorry, Allah. I'm sorry. This we go. Album, it, yeah, but then crazy. again, really, but what you really love that album, bro. We go, like, we go, we go. This compare, man is crazy. We, you can we listen back to that album from beginning to end. Oh, like, Bruh, we comparing it to all great albums. So yeah. to compare to take care. Compare to take care. You tell me don't stack up. You tell me take care don't stack up. You tell me take care don't stack up. Take care is a great. It album. is definitely better it than that. Album. Album. Bro, what what make what? Why are you saying it's better? Like what? What There's track no do you skips. like? Oh, bro, stop it. One skip stop all, it. all of them really. There, there's no there's no skip on take care. What are we talking about? Okay, okay. Oh, 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 you take care. Hold on, I, hold on. I just say no skip on take care. What was the next one? Nothing. Be the nothing same. There's oh, definitely oh, no oh, skip oh. on that joint. Okay, what what songs you listen to to this day on there? Tuscan Leather, First Thing, Started from the Bottom, Wu Tang Forever, Own It, uh, 
worst behavior Wu-Tang forever time, for, huh Wu Tang forever bro bro everybody still plays Kanye album like it's still the same bro bro stop like nothing the was, album. Bruh, bro nothing, nothing, nothing was this right hold on listen 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 hold on 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 which one you think is Kanye's worst album? You said late registration, right? Who me? Ain't yes. No, no, no. I didn't say three. it was his worst album. No, I said, I'm talking about three. three. I'm talking about three. Yeah. three. Yeah. That's the worst one. Yeah. yeah. And what is Drake's best one? Best one out of the three? Yes. Oof. Go ahead. Yeah, and got, it, it, it's a reason it. why I'm, I'm setting you up <laughs> for this. Uh yeah. his Go worst ahead. one out of the three might have. Damn, I can't find it, bro. No, I'm talking about nothing. No, I don't know those three. I what is his say, best one? Right. What's his best one? Yeah, out of those three. We just say take it's, care because it's tied, it's tied between take care and if you're reading this. Okay. If you're reading this, it doesn't compare to take care. Bro, but I, bro I, look at the track list, bro. Come oh, on. Okay. What are we Whatever you want to say, ain't nobody in the history of life gonna uh right. say take uh if you're reading this is better than take care. But I want you to understand this. Mm-hmm. If te- if if that's Kanye's worst, he is destroying Drake. <laughs> Late no, worst out of the three albums. Out of the three albums, he has three great albums. Kanye's like worst album. album is being Drake's best album. That's not his worst album overall. I'm no, I'm talking about out, out of those three. three. Out of those three. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Is you, are you saying that's beating all three of Drake's albums? Oh, no. So is that those is. three? Yes, it is. is. One thing that one thing that Drake cannot do that Kanye can do is paint a picture with an album. Like when he 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 puts together these albums in sequence so right, where it's like, bro, it tells a story from beginning to end. You can visualize this album. You can listen to it, bro. Like I used to literally. When I would drive home, I would listen to the first three Kanye albums back to back to back on the way to Houston from Tuskegee. I mean, well, Tuskegee to Houston or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would listen to all three albums like back to back to back. Actually, probably first four albums actually back to back to back. But bro, that's one thing he can do. He can like literally paint a picture with that pen. Mm-hmm. Drake don't do that, bro. Like Kanye can do that. The Drake albums be all over the place. The the most the best sequenced album he dropped was Take Care. That's the reason why people like it so much. It's just because mm-hmm. of how the album was sequenced. Everything else, just a whole bunch of radio music, just strong at you here and there. The albums, one minute is R and B, the next minute is street shit, the next minute is club banger. It's but just I, all over the place. Every but, last but album. You- but you know what? It's kind of strange. Hearing that from you, bro, because I be following you on Facebook. Hearing that from you when you said Killer Mike didn't win that Grammy because he ain't had no radio song, and then to, to punish Drake for having nothing but radio hits. I'm not, about the I'm not punishing no, we're not talking about the Grammys. I'm not punishing We're not talking about the Grammys. Yeah. I'm telling you the sequencing of the album, it matters. Bruh. But, 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 but so you're telling me on nothing was the same. I'm not the one, like, I don't know when's the last time y'all heard nothing was the same. Like, like, Track from track. There was no sequencing. The songs mixed perfect. The songs blend together perfect. No, you wasn't but talking about nothing. Was saying. You said if, you, if you're reading this, you so, said that. So is that, the only, is that the no, only I'm just saying that blends or, together. I'm just com- yeah. I'm just commenting towards this blending argument. But yeah, I'm okay. saying the way that, that okay, this is what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. I'm saying Drake. Okay, two things. J. Cole can do this too. J. Cole can paint a picture. Yeah. When he true. drops an album, you can feel like you're there. Drake don't do that. Only album that got close to that was Take Care. Every other album has just been all over the place. Maybe so far gone a little bit because that's before he got went totally in a whole nother direction with his shit. Like he just started like mimicking everybody he liked. So it's like, bro, Drake's music be all over the place now, man. And he don't, his albums, they don't be making sense sometimes because they're not sequenced right, bro. That's all I'm saying. It's just 
whoever's putting those albums together, they be all over the place. Because, like, Drake wants to be a Afro Beats rapper one minute. Then he wants to be a singer the next minute. Then he wants to be in the streets the next minute and gangster rap. It's all over the place, bro. You know what I'm saying? And he don't, it, it don't, some of that shit just don't mesh right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. But for me, for me, my personal preference, that three album run, those three albums, I thought the music coincided well. And I think aesthetically to my ears, I'd rather listen to those three than Kanye's three. Now, that's oh. not a diss, that's not a slight to Kanye's three. That is it's not a diss. slight to Kanye's three. No, you think it's a slight, but it's like comparing LeBron, Jordan, Kareem, it's not a slight when you say, hey, this was a little better than this one here, here. I'm just pick. I'm just picking from the greats. I'm nitpicking. So, for, so for is, me, it one in, is that one and two? What'd you say? As far as three album runs, is is your your number one Drake and your number two Kanye, or you got somebody else ahead of Kanye? I don't have a problem with Kanye being two. I don't have a problem with Kanye being two. You know you who don't even, get enough credit? Who? Jay Z's no, uh, first three. Oh, like, for sure. Reasonable Who's doubt. That? In my lifetime, volume one, then hard not life volume two. True. Those albums dope as hell. For me, and reasonable doubt might be his best album. For, for me, it when, I, is definitely when, when, I, when I think about uh competing volume with that Kanye like discography, uh with those three Kanye albums, the only name I can really come at with is Outcast. Now so we talking realistic. groups. I didn't know if that was a. I didn't know if that was allowed. You, you can Group. go. You, you can talking, do. You can do. What about you, you tribe, tribe Called Quest? Tribe Called Quest. Tribe, tribe, tribe. Not seeing Kanye, bro. But, but those those three outcasts. I'm albums. just saying the first three tribe albums was dope. We not, Stink on the cool. Aliens, Equimini. He brought up yep. outcasts. We talking about groups. No, Stank on you. No, no. If we talking about the first three albums, you Southern. Not Stank on you. It don't, you, it don't have to be first I, three. I just three and three album run. I misspoke. But if you talking about three album run, uh, uh, AT Aliens, Equimini, and Stangonia, that's a hell of a run. It is. It is. That's debatable. But you yeah. trying to put Drake and all that? I'm like, bro. It is. But no. Say, but you know what? Out of those three, what, what's, your, what's, your week, what's your what's your week album? Equimini. Equimini is the best. Out of the three, out of those three, yeah, Equimini is the best. That and I will even. Do, if I had to probably stink on you, it's probably the most commercially recognized, but as far as what I listen to, I listen yeah. to Equ AT Aliens and Equipment almost yeah, every day. Yeah, I was day. thinking AT Aliens <laughs> was the best. I have I some hey, bro, I switch it up so much mm -hmm. with those two, but if you say that that's saying something if stank on you is the worst of the three. That's saying a whole lot. It's just commercial, is all. That's all compared to the other two. And I felt like the other ones need to be more commercial. It doesn't <laughs> matter, bro. It just really that one when somebody says something about being pop or whatnot, it's just popular music. I'm about to say rap is yeah, popular. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So I was like, what is pop? Because rap is popular. It's just fine. Like mm -hmm. Tupac All Lies on Me is probably one of the best albums ever made. And I don't know a bigger double disc album than that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all eyes on me is still to this day. And me against person. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are oh man, that those are stories, man. I'm like, come on, bro. So now, I, I think I think you gave Drake some of the worst albums to pick from. No, you could you no, could you could but those are his best three in a row. Like we're saying three album run in a row. That's his best three in a row. I would have went to his debut album before I went to uh yeah, it, what the one with the uh thank me later? Yeah, thank me later. I'll no. go thank me later before. I mean, I mean, no. these are those are th th three great albums. It's just you comparing them against. Yeah, it, isn't it an it, amazing it, it, three? Like this, this is a legendary like, like, three album run by Kanye. Like, like, but that's just preference. Like, I late registration was cool. It was good. It was good. It was good. But it's not like something I'm gonna go back and listen to all the time. It was a great album, and that's something like I can't even remember the last time I listened to Late Registration. 
When the last time you listened to College Dropout? I might have heard that one like a week ago. Okay. But but you know I'm like that's that. You know like impact plays a key too, right? You remember right. when that hit when that like right. first came out and the buzz around Kanye. Then the second album came. And the buzz was around Kanye. Yeah, he he yeah. still had buzz, but I wasn't as excited as I was when I heard the first one. Then graduation hit. And I was like, oh shoot. Like mm. that that was hot. 808 was a letdown a little bit, but then my beautiful dark twisted fantasy came out. And that was that was crazy. Yeah, that's a different one. Yeah, Man, that was crazy. That's a different you know, one. If you really if you really want to talk about something, that 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 was beautiful. That, that was that a is- great album. That, I think great is even sliced, giving it a slight. That that is crazy. That's one of the best albums of all time. That one of the best albums I ever heard. Then I probably ain't even probably. And I'm like I said, I said this numerous times. That is easily the best Red Ross verse I have ever heard in my entire life. That was in a <laughs> that was in a what they call it, dress, whatever. That was in a new dress. Red dress. That was in a new red dress, new dress. New yeah. Dress. Bro, that is hands down. And when he confirmed it in his book, I literally got tweets that was saying, I was like, bro, that's how much I love that album when it when I was saying it back down like bro, Ross. Like I played that so many times. <laughs> I used Man, to work in the game room in the student union. I used to play this over the speaker in there every day. This whole album. Man, I keep looking at this late registration track list, man, and I'm trying to find Matter of fact, how Ross like, can be up there this, too. <laughs> you trying to find what? I'm I'm trying to find like how how do you say that this is a seven, bro? <laughs> like well, this I album was it, amazing. Okay, okay, let's say I gave it a 10. So what am I giving my dark twisted fantasy? You don't have to give it a 10, but... No, no, let's say I gave it no, a 10. No, what am I giving gra- my dark twisted you gave, fantasy? You gave Graduation a 7, and you gave this a 5. Right, I think Graduation is better than this album. So if I gave this one a 10, what am I giving Graduation? What am I giving College Dropout? I think this is the worst of the three. But that's, uh, that's not... Yeah, but That's cool but, to say. That's cool yeah. to say, but... Yeah, that's cool to say, but guess what? I, I would put uh late registration over uh, College over, uh like this album. If 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 this album was trash, I never would, said it was trash. No, I'm just saying, like if it wasn't yeah. an amazing album, that would almost mean the death of Kanye Kanye's solo career. It would be the sophomore slump. It would be like mm-hmm. if we wouldn't we wouldn't hear a lot from him rapping. If he if he bombed this album or if it just wasn't amazing, this album was amazing, bro. Bro, have you heard yeah, this bro, album? Was amazing. Yeah, it was a great album. Bro, it was a great. Just album. Don't watch Touch the Sky, bro. Just 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 no, nah, no, nah, I, bro. I I remember this. Like I remember the time it came out. I remember where I was. I remember when hearing it. It was a great album. That bro, makes it a great album it. when you remember where you were in the time. That's yeah. That's all but the I could do that. Possible. I could do that for all those albums, like. But I'm comparing it to his other great albums. I'm saying out of the great albums, this is the one that's less great. And out of another person who made great albums, this album isn't as great as another album. Like That's what I'm comparing it to. Like I said, I'm comparing Jordan, LeBron, and Kareem. That's what we're doing. And when you start doing that, you just nitpick. You nitpick. That's fair. I just, I just thought about, uh, no. Nah. I'm gonna ask you all this, and I just need a simple. I just need I just need a uh, simple number, just a simple number from one through ten. I ain't talking about all time. It's just like it's its own thing. If it if all of them are ten, just give them a ten. The first all of Dre's album that you just named, what are you ranking them? I'm talking about what are you giving them? Not ranking them like are you giving this? Give it. Give us what does a one look like? Give us a one. Give us a one. Just give us a floor so I can give you a ceiling. Give me a floor. I can give you a ceiling. You said a one. A yeah, one. Yeah. Give me. Uh, give me. Give me what a one is, and I can give you a ceiling. One you album. You rank a one. Yeah. I don't know what I rank one, but I know what I rank a ten. This is a ten. No, no, no. Rank, rank, rank me a one, and I can I, rank you the other one. I, just I need can't do that. Floor. 
Bro, I don't know, know any bad. I don't listen to bad albums. Because after I listen to horrible music, I don't listen to them no more. That's so what I'm saying. Like, what what's, the, what's the last Bro, you know what, what you want to rank on. on? No, no, no. And no. then you're like, man, I'm never listening to this again. No. What do you rank, bro? You know where you want to rank these. What would you? What would you? Give I'm giving them all tens. I'm giving them all tens. It's no way you get. It's no way you give it. Oh come uh, on, bro. Man. See, that's yeah. why I told you to give me a floor. There's no way. Hold on. You you telling so me you went straight for the ceiling? <laughs> yeah, I went straight for the ceiling. So you telling you me said, it's and a, you, it's your a, first statement was hold on, hold on, hold on, you got all tens. So you give basically them all telling me so so you basically telling me that uh. What was the uh, last one from Drake? If you're reading now, read if you're reading, reading it. it. So you telling me it's up there with the Chronic album, Doggy Style, Doggy Style album, Dre 2001 album, Blueprint album, the Eminem Show album. We talking about classic album. Tens are classic that you will play. Oh, I thought over. I thought you were asking me about the uh the. The three. Ten, the that's three what a ten. Come on, bro. Okay. You, you, give me, you know give me, give me, is. give me your question again. I, I missed the question there. What, where me. would you rank these albums? Ten being the highest, one being the lowest. What, what album is? The, am I ranking? The first, the three Drake albums that you put out there. Nine if and ten. All of them. If you nine and ten. All of. Nine and ten. Wh- nine and who ten. got the? Who got the nine? How many nines and how many tens? And who got the nine? Mm. Nothing. <laughs> uh, nothing was the same could be the nine. The other two got to get the ten. Bro, there's no way in the guy's green earth that you were telling me if you're reading this is a ten. But I, I'll, yeah, I'll let I'll, you have it. I'll let I you like, have it. I like, I, I like the, I what like are the giving these Kanye, the What band. are you giving these Kanye albums? Nine and ten. What is what is ten and what is the nine? Graduation, college drop. I can get the ten. Late registration, get nine. And you telling me that's not a good three album run? You just said it. I, it is a great three album run. I we're talking about the best. It's like saying you are saying LeBron not a good player. He's a great player. He's not Michael Jordan. You saying Kareem not a good player? He's a great player. Okay, like, so who's I'm, Michael Jordan in these three albums then? Between Kanye Drake, I'm going Drake. I can promise you right now. I can promise you right now. If somebody can just, if if Apple kept up with data right now, I can guarantee you the Haven, Tez, or I haven't listened to none of those three albums. That's cool, but you don't listen to that type of music. Yes, like, I do. On, on I a, love on it. A reg- Nigga, I have on a, every on a regular, Drake on a re- but on a regular, you don't. Like your your yes, discography is different. I listen. I listen Bruh, to Twitter. you named your top. You named your top groups, and you said Wu Tang, Ha, ah, Project Pack, and Three Six Mafia. Bro, come on. Like you just got different Bruce discography. Ever. Like look at that. Look, bro. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, bro, you have an argument. You have an argument. I'm not. I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying your discography is different. Like. So- so like oh, I don't man. I don't uh like if if a Drake album comes out I might listen to it just to listen to it but like I pick and choose the songs I want to listen what to. What does that say? It's number three in twenty twenty four. I focus. can't see it. Can't see it. Uh, spin about you. Yeah, but that's not. I'm talking about these. Who three is albums, that? Bro. Who is the artist? That's Drake. That's Drake. That's how, that means out of twenty twenty four. That is the third most song that I played all year. And the song is five, by the way. Um, I ain't gonna look, lie. I'm gonna look at mine. One of your, one of your date songs. <laughs> nah. Hey, bro, you know how you know how old I am, bro. You know how old that second song is, and it's being played right now. <laughs> you see PSC up there, do your thing, and we in 2024. That ain't one of the PSC 25 to life, it probably one of the hardest uh, albums ever, bro. If you haven't heard it, you sleep. You sleep. Man, you sleep. How you sleep. How you find your 2024? Uh, <laughs> what's your name? Man, hold on. Listen, okay. well, let me end the show before some test messages <laughs> right, pop up and fold you be all up in my bed. <laughs> I should have put it on Do Not Disturb. But as always, 
Bro, ask, ask, ask people to, uh, my bad for interrupting you. Ask people to tell them your best three album runs in the chat. Oh, yeah. get. Oh, yeah. Definitely put out your best three album runs in uh, rap history. Because I would love to know these. It can be Group, groups. Groups It can be groups. It can be women. It doesn't matter. Give me your best three. And it ain't, it's, it's a very small group of women. So don't come up here. Talk about some city girl three hour. Ain't nobody. Stop. Bro, I'm just yeah, saying they first three. Name name a city girl album right now. <laughs> exactly. I ain't <laughs> listening to you right now. No, 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 I'm about to start doing. I'm about to start pulling people coattails, man, when they start <laughs> saying crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Stop me. As always, man. Appreciate everybody for uh being on the pod. I wish uh Quint was on here. He ain't out of this one because he got to give me uh his uh best three run. But uh as always, everybody, get tell the folks where they can follow you at and all this good stuff. We're gonna start with the superstar since he want to go first so much. Oh whatever, man. <laughs> it's your boy Club Shay Shay. It's your boy Dave, man. It's where you can follow me right here. Boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? On all the major uh, platforms. Just check me out. And again, we do this every week. You already know what it is. Yeah, it's your boy Tez. Proto imagery right there on all platforms. Uh, about to ramp up my, my social media presence here in a couple of weeks. So check out. Got some new stuff dropping. Yo, Arlon, I'm back on IG, but only for a couple weeks. Find me ESG underscore AEA underscore DCS. Shout out to B Sharp, The Haven, Tez, Water Coolers, um, Quint, and um, everybody else who uh, who's friends of the show. And uh, check us out every week. And as always, I'm... Winston Shaw of the Sharp Shooters Podcast. Drop every Wednesday, man. Appreciate everybody that can uh show up. I need more people to act like they want to show up, man. They they say, it, but at the same time, it's my fault too. And before the summer, man, we're doing a live show. So I know it ain't gonna be as bad as I was with the interviews and say, oh, the interviews are coming, then I it almost take this. Episode 28 did finally drop a uh, interview or something. But we definitely gonna do a live show. And I'm afraid when it becomes live, that's when the chaos gonna really happen. Cause you're gonna have food. Hey man, put me up there, bro. I gotta let y'all boy in the old song, bro. <laughs> I didn't know these country folks that I grew up with, boy. They gonna they gonna they gonna show their ass. But appreciate y'all. Keep supporting the show. We uh gonna keep growing. Almost 500 sub. And as always, and forever. I ain't gonna even do it right now. I didn't want to keep shouting out to everybody <laughs> right now, man. Just 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 appreciate everybody for just keep blessing the show. Because trust me, this is not easy. It may look easy. And thank you to everybody that gave me a lot of encouraging words about uh doing this because trust me it took a lot on the first episode to step out on the limb to do this but i want to also shout out my boy for hitting ten thousand subscribers my boy quinn man my dog hit ten thousand subscribers on his react channel i just want to give him a shout out on that always a bit supporter of the uh, podcast definitely got to get him back on here Cause I know uh, he liked talking about uh, music and uh, shoes. He definitely a shoe guy for real. So I'll put him up there with a lot of folks. So shout out to him. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you already know. Fuck Auburn and roll.